they're saying that all Earth curve it, it doesn't exist in this at all then. This is definitely requiring a flat plane. Today I'm going to show you how Nathan Oakley, one of Flat Earth's top boys, bases all of his proofs on cherry picking and lies. Let's take a look. Smart move, Toon. Yeah, a lot smarter than coming here. Because you'd be annihilated and humiliated as we rubbed in your face. The fact you haven't got a bent baseline. You're right, Nathan. And actually, Jaron did question this. Maybe you should pay a little more attention. Spherical mathematics included as far as uh, adding the curve between the two people? Correct. Like there's, there's no curve between the two people involved. Oh, so the, the, this is just the picture, right? So the so distance, distance, yeah, the distance they did is 1.1 kilometers. So the chord distance versus the distance, the arc distance is going to be very nominal. There you go. And as Toon points out, the difference when treating the distance between Red's rhetoric and astronomy live as either a distance uh, across the surface of a sphere or the chord straight through one or a flat plane is negligible. As in, it really doesn't matter because they're only 1.11 kilometers away from each other. But do continue. And the fact that what's been confirmed by all of your direct measurements that you've affirmed this with, prove Earth's measured flat. Actually, it just proves that the distance was treated as being on a straight line for the calculation, just to make it more simple. But again, it's such a minute difference that it really doesn't matter. And anyway, Nathan, don't worry. I've got something special lined up for you today. The midpoint between them is 524 kilometers is at an angle of 53 degrees. So proving Earth's flat with a horizontal baseline in order to give you that angle. Oh, don't get repetitive already. You're going to bore my audience. It's another flat Earth proof. Let's see if Jaron catches this one. Mm -hmm. So that he was able to measure this 53 degrees. An angle off a flat baseline proving Earth is flat. We bloody get it, Treacle. Just how about showing us why this matters or something? So then this this is the dis this is the actual like altitude calculation, right? And he's using a flat baseline here. There's no curve between the two people involved. Oh, so the this is just the picture. There's no curve between the two people involved. Oh, he's using a flat baseline here. There's no curve between the two people involved. Oh, so the this is just the picture. They know their baseline is is 1.11 kilometers. They cut that in half to get 0.5. So that's 1.15 kilometers flat. He's using a flat baseline here. You're running out of chances to either prove your case or just point out something else that you don't understand. Be a triangle. So you're saying that all Earth curve it, it doesn't exist in this at all then? This is definitely requiring a flat plane. There's no curve between the two people involved. To measure this angle to give you the difference in the triangle. So this is a flat earth proof. It really isn't. He really is a one trick pony, isn't he? He's using a flat baseline here. This measurement requires earth to be flat too. I wonder if Jaron yeah. will point that out. We'll see. Ah, uh, that's the point. Yep, you got it. This is an evaluation and assessment after eight years and being leaders of the flat earth. This is the evaluation that we're going to we're going to listen to. Personally, during this discussion, I think that Jaron proved to be a credit to all of you so-called truthers. He showed that he's willing to listen, and he even seemed to understand when Toon pointed out that there would only be a slight difference, which again means it's insignificant. Would it help if we read out the definition together, Nathan? Come on then. Negligible. Adjective. So small or unimportant as to be not worth considering. Maybe make that your word of the day. Oh, what the hell? I've just realized that was just his opener. Uh, let's just see if he says anything worthwhile after we skip this lengthy intro. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, this is the Reg Rhetoric uh, Astronomy Live from 2015, 2016, you know, way back then about how they can tell the distance of the ISS. And Nathan chimes in, showing that he doesn't understand middle school mathematics. His family must be so proud. Folks, this is this is where we're at. Well, that's elevation angle measurements. Isn't it? It's not where we're at, Kiwi. It's where they're at. They'll need a flat earth for this. They've done it multiple times. And I gather by you only mentioning when the first time was done that you haven't watched the most recent video that Red's made about it, which came out only about a month ago. Definitely a good video for everyone to check out, especially you flat out. Well, actually, you know, no, maybe advance your maths past that of an 11 year old first. Ask yourself, you'll find, I, I confirm that myself. Um, 0.1212 is the angular size between these two tracks. I'm just going to skip past this stuff we saw in the opening section. And then you can create a triangle with that. Now, this isn't the height yet. This is this. 
Sound familiar? Has that base yeah. of that triangle got a curve to it? Uh, no, Nathan, because we can form the base of the triangle using a tangent, a chord, whatever, really, as long as it's straight. It doesn't have to be physical, though. Of course, you're still too stupid to realise that, or you're just happy to lie to the gullible idiots to follow you. Yeah, he tries to dismiss it based on the small distance between two numpties. You still got a triangle. You're not getting any elevation angle. That's that's the least of their problems. They're not actually trying to measure the elevation angle here. They're using parallax. So I only need to know the distance between them and the angle formed by their lines of sight. That and the angular size of the moon, which uh, I believe Reds also has a video on how you can work that out for yourself. Go on. This is the distance to the um, to the ISS of the midpoint of their their base there. The, the, their base there. Bit of a stutter there, too. No wonder why that was. <laughs> Pretty childish, guys. There are many reasons why people can stutter. Uh, one of them is actually because their brains are working faster than their mouth can keep up with. Luckily, you morons will never have that problem. So they, they cut the triangle in half. And point one two one two turns into point zero six zero six. They know their baseline is is 1.11 kilometers. They cut that in half to get point five. So that's 1.15 kilometers flat to be a triangle. Pay attention, Nathan. He said 1.11, not 1.15. I know it's maybe a little bit pedantic, but decimal places matter. And once more, the base of the triangle doesn't even need to be on the surface of the Earth for the calculation. We use tangents all the time, like in celestial navigation. You know, that thing that you Muppets try and claim you understand, yet are all too scared to even touch a sextant? Bell ends. So you're saying that all Earth curve it, it doesn't exist in this at all then, this is definitely requiring a flat plane to measure this angle to give you the difference in the triangle. Okay, clearly Nathan is never going to understand this. Uh, we can only hope that he'll wake up one day and smell his failure, but I very much doubt it. So this is a flat earth proof. This measurement requires earth to be flat to. I wonder if Jaron yeah. will point that out. We heard this bit in the opener, so let's skip ahead. Jaron has just been presented by McToom with something that proves unequivocally that Earth is being measured flat. Actually, no, as always. Uh, this shows that we are treating it as flat in the calculations, not that it is measured flat. Maybe learn to word better. That is a fact. Disseminated to Jaron by McToom. Let's see if Jaron catches the fact that Toon has just proved Earth is being measured flat. We'll see. By five kilometers. And uh, there's all the numbers that gives a, a use a trigonometry here is what you need to use that gets the distance to the ISS from their location of 524.73 kilometers. Now that's, that's the distance from the ISS. Not good. No. Spherical mathematics included as far as uh, adding the curve between the two people or anything like that. Correct. There's there's no curve between the two people involved. Oh, so the, this is just the picture, right? So, so it's spherical mathematics included as far as uh, adding the curve between the two people or anything like that. Correct. There's there's no curve between the two people involved. Oh, so the, this is just the picture, right? So, so, it's so there is no curve involved between the two people. Okay. Just a the short distance. distance. Just, a, just, just a short distance. distance. Oh, look, Jeremy realized that it's because it's over a short distance. Looks like he's more honest than you, Oakley, me lad. Yeah, the distance they did is 1.1 kilometers. So the chord distance versus the distance, the arc distance is going to be. No, sorry, there was no chord in your triangle. Did he say there was a chord in the triangle? Maybe hear him out. There was no arc in your triangle either, Toon. It sounds like you're saying that when measuring a triangle, they're measuring an arc or a chord. It sounds like you're saying that you're an idiot that can't wrap his head around this. They use the distance between them from Google Maps. Whether you like it or not, as the Earth is a sphere, this would be an arc. However, for simplicity's sake, they use it as a flat baseline. And they can do this because as it is over such a short distance, the difference between the arc and chord lengths is minuscule and not worth caring about. You know what? I've already had enough of this. Let's move on to where we see Red's Rhetoric's most recent video on this topic. In the screenshot, you can see two observation points, observation point A and observation point B, with a line in between them. That line is our baseline. 
observation point A is where I was at, and observation point B is where Astronomy Live was at. You will also notice there is an arrow in the center of the frame. That arrow represents the direction of the moon, and thus, that is the direction that we were looking at. So, just for any confused flurfs watching this, uh, this is a separate time that Reds and Astronomy Live calculated the distance to the ISS. We have new measurements and angles, okay? With me so far? No? Tough. And as you can see, the direction of our baseline is not aligned with the direction of that arrow. And when we did the math originally, we had done the math to suggest that Astronomy Live was looking directly over me, not off to my side. And as you can see, that is not the case. So the objection here is quite obvious. He's saying that because we did not take this offset into account, that therefore our original answer is wrong, and therefore no conclusions can be made from it. So, as you see, a concern was raised by another flurf regarding the observation. As Reds is not a flat earther, he doesn't mind correcting himself, especially when this is going to make it worse for the flat earth side. In my original video, we used this angle in blue, which represents the altitude angle of the moon. However, as you can see with this angle in red, there is actually an offset between the heading of the moon and my direction relative to Astronomy Live. Because of that offset, the altitude angle of the moon is not what we should have used to calculate the slant range to the International Space Station. Because of this offset, we should have used this angle in green. And while that is correct, he seems to be completely unaware that this new angle is actually a detriment to his flat earth conspiracy. All right, so as we can see, the new angle is 68.71 degrees as opposed to the 65.67 degrees originally used. And as anyone with a basic knowledge of geometry will be able to tell you that extra 3.04 degrees is going to put the ISS even higher. So now we have everything we need to calculate the slant range to the International Space Station. We have our baseline of 765 meters, we have our parallax of 0.0885 degrees, and we have our new angle A which is 68.71 degrees. After crunching the numbers, we see that the slant range to the International Space Station is 461.468 kilometers. That is a difference of only 10 kilometers from the original value that Astronomy Live had in his video. But with that said, let's now utilize this slant range to find the altitude of the International Space Station, and we will find that altitude over a curved Earth and a flat Earth to show that there really isn't much of a difference. Oh dear. <laughs> well, I, if the flatheads understood maths even a little, they would have never brought this up. So here we are once again in GeoGebra, and as you can see, I already have the curve of the Earth to scale. I also have this segment that is the length of our slant range. All right, now we're just going to skip ahead to the results, and that's all I need to show to make an even bigger fool of Oakley and his parade of sycophants than they do already. And just like that, I can tell you what the altitude of the International Space Station is over the flat Earth. Earth, and that's by looking at its position on the y-axis. And as you can see, it is at 420.48 kilometers. So even without taking the curvature of the Earth into account, we are at an altitude that is impossible for a plane to reach. Well, Nathan, things aren't looking very good for you, are they? But what is its altitude over the curved Earth? Well, let's find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a segment between A and the center of the Earth. I'm then going to find the intersection between that line and the curve of the Earth. And I'm going to measure the distance between A and B. So the altitude of the International Space Station over the curved Earth is 423.1 kilometers. Okay, so we have a difference of a whopping 2.64 kilometers. Yep, negligible. Phew, that was fun. And a massive congrats to Nathan Oakley for being this Wednesday's wanker. I uh, definitely encourage you to take a look at Red's Rhetoric's video on this, as well as checking out, you know, the rest of his channel and Astronomy Live. They make excellent content and often meet up for shuttle lunches and things like that. And the, the footage is just amazing. And a massive thank you as well to the triggered team of people that support me financially. It really does help me to keep creating content. And with that, I will catch you beautiful bastards on the next one. I want to be the best in the game. Invest in my name. Check no restraints. I'm obsessed with the pain I ingest, I retain, assess and I change, possessed by the thought I'll be free one day from society's restraints, money, clown,